Nicholas Kuhn there both with Luke Shanley. Gentlemen, very well done. Nicholas, how happy are you with that performance and that victory today? Yes, I think it was a difficult uh, pitch, but, but we did well. Three goals is, is good and I think we're happy with the three points. How much did you have to be patient today given you went in at half-time nil-nil? Yeah, we knew it's not going to be easy. Uh, I think we had a couple of chances already in the first half and then we were we were happy that, that we could score in the, in the second half. Was that always going to be the difficulty today, making sure once you got the first goal then it, it was OK but it was being patient early on? Yes, of course. It's all about the first goal. And then I, I think uh, we got some more space and could create uh, more chances. So, so it was good. Cameron, how do you assess Nicholas now that he's getting up to speed and, and playing and the contribution he's given to this team? Yeah, no, uh, last few games have been really good. Um, you know, I think even before that, you know, the boys in the team could see, see in, in training that, you know, he had, he had the skills and the pace to kind of affect the game. And, you know, it's good for him now that he's, he's put all together. From your own point of view, in terms of a, a clean sheet, how key was that today as well? Because it's been a, a while for this team. Yeah, no, it's important. Um, I think games like today, you know, you're going to have a lot of the ball, but it's about kind of limiting them opportunities to kind of get out of the pitch where they can kind of win free kicks and corners and, and put it in the box, stuff that they want to do. So so from that side, it was good. I thought we limited them to, to very few shots and then obviously eventually broke, got to broke, broke them down. How does this set you up for next week? Yeah, no, I think we're in a good place. I think, you know, um, the last three or four weeks we've been we've been in a pretty good place performance-wise. Obviously, some dis disappointing result away at Hearts, you know, with the red card and and uh, the penalty. But apart from that, I think I think it, as a whole, the last few weeks the performance has been pretty good. So, you know, it's just about maintaining that and and um, bringing it into the last few games. Well, well done today, Nicholas is the Cinch Premiership Man of the Match. Can you hand over the award, please? Cheers, man. Good grab, thank you, Will. Right. Thanks. Well done. Cheers. Yeah, comfortable in the end for Celtic. There was a lot on the game. They had to be very patient. Um, and I think you'll take a goal, however it happens. This a, a good old stromash in the box to lead to the first one. Yes, um, you'll take them, uh, especially how scrappy the, sort of, the first half was in terms of um, having so much numbers in there for Livingston. You know, the left back had a chance to clear it. Little ball inside, you know, Hatati, I think it's his strike away and it just bounces back off the lad. It's very unlucky, but you'll take it. Yeah, absolutely you take it, Chris, because there was a lot on this game and it was a frustrating first half for Celtic. Yeah, they just lacked a bit of quality in the final third. It was always about the first goal. Once Celtic got it, then, uh, you know, Livingston, who really didn't offer any attacking threat, then they had to be a bit braver. The game opened up and looked slightly fortunate, but I think we all felt, Chris included, that the goal was coming. Yeah, it was coming. You've felt that as well, Chris? Oh, I, was, well, I was watching the game. <laughs> you weren't in the first half according to Chris Nixie, but let's not go back there. Why? Uh, the second, See, the second goal was very that, different. I mean, I, yeah, oh, I mean, it is, but it, it, you look at the defending from Livingston as well, you've got to do better. They've got to do better. I mean, there was times as well, even the Kyogo chance just at the end of the first half as well, defending, obelized, like lackadaisical getting onto it. You can understand why Livingston are where they are. And um, in the second goal was a little bit of quality though uh, from Bernardo, as you said, when he came on. Um, you, you look at, he, he's all, I mean, I think he's, I think when, when he first came, you thought he's going to be this holding midfielder, but he gets forward so often. Um, and it's, it is a clean enough strike, but it takes a little nick off of Obelai and gives Shamal George absolutely no chance. We've seen players come off the bench for Celtic quite a few times this season and have a big impact. And that is a positive for Brendan Rodgers to know that he can make an impact from the bench. Yeah, all the, all the subs that he brought on, you know, Bernardo, he gets on the half turn there, it's a, it's a great ball into O'Reilly, a little layoff, it's a great finish, but Yang getting it, obviously for the third goal, he gets it and pokes it into Ida, great hold up play, lays it off to O'Reilly, so, you know, really positive subs and they, and they made an impact. Yeah, this is the third goal, Chris, and I'm sure Shamal George won't want to watch it back again, but the build-up play, um, the one-touch football, that's what you need to break down a Livingston defence. Yeah, and it's, it's a really clever layoff from uh, from Adam Ida. Kyogo started the last few games, you know, they've got that competition in the centre-forward role. Uh, good little poke there in the setback. It just allows O'Reilly to hit the hit the shot first time there, and he side foot. So actually, George, who made, who made some good saves at the start of the second half, I think he'll be really disappointed with that one. But the big pluses for Celtic today: Carter Vickers seemingly okay after 90 minutes, and Hatati, you know, an hour or whatever it is, you know, him yeah. coming back. He what did you make he, of his he, performance he, today? He just makes such a difference, and he's he's, he's going to still be miles off it in terms of his fitness levels and what have you but but just to see him play an hour 
uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure if he has a good week's training that he will start next week. And, and that's that's big for Celtic. But he's still not going to be hitting the heights which which we saw of last season. He, he needs game time. But that's a massive boost for Celtic. Yeah, a huge boost. And the result today, Robert, because it's a difficult place to come this. Um, no, we've seen not it in really. the past. But a difficult surface anyway. And uh, they got a performance in that second half and the result. I think last season it was a difficult place to come. Um, as, you know... Boydie touched on there that it's, um, it was really easy for Celtic at times. Um, Livingston never really posed a threat. Um, they brought on Guffrey and the boy Anderson, but you know they never really uh, caused Celtic any problems. Carter Vickers was in second gear, and I just feel when the game's like that, you just need to be patient, and the subs made an impact. But as you say there, it's like um, Livingston find herself in that spot for a reason. Um, you've got to go here against Celtic and try and get the... You know, the crowd we I know sell it to it free stands and all that stuff, but you need to try and get your home fans with you. And that's the reason why they've only won one in the last ten. Yeah, it's a really disappointing run of form for Livingston. John, well done. How do you sum up that one? Um, very good. You know, controlled performance, kind of limited to Livingston to the next to nothing. Um, we scored some very good goals. So it was a pleasing afternoon because, as I said before the game, it's, it can be difficult here. You know, in terms of the, a day like today when the sun's shining, it dries the pitch up. It's not easy to play on, but the boys, you know, stuck at it relentless in terms of just maintaining those attacks and eventually dropped them. We got the win. You had a few chances in the first half, but second half when you came out, you certainly had a, a lot more. What did you say at half time? Just to keep doing what you're doing. And, I mean, in the first half, Livingston always going to have energy, but when they've been so much into the blocks and, and trying to track you, then you know as, as the game goes on, we know it'll open up. So again, it's easy to, get, especially this time of season, to get you know drawn into chasing something and doing something we're not used to. We just continue to do what we do and that's what the players know and you can see that second half, the calmness of them, just maintained you know, that, that uh, ability to maintain pressure and eventually they break down and we get a goal. So that's, that's important for us. Should you have had a penalty in the first half? I haven't seen it back properly, I've only seen it briefly at the time. Again, if, once I see it, I'll know better, but at the time Hugo's adamant it was a bit of contact there, he got his body in front, but again, I don't want to make that a talking point. We'll just come off a, a very good performance and a 3-0 win. Yeah, and I was talking to Cameron Carter Vickers about a clean sheet, and he said that although they, you did limit Livingston to chances, it's all the other work about defending set pieces, etc. Has that been key? Because it's been a few weeks now since you had a clean sheet. Yeah, it is, and it's always nice when we focus on the negatives. But uh, we've scored 17 goals out of the Hearts game. We've scored another three today, so it's good. Our defensive game is always important. We know that also gives us you know, momentum as well. Sometimes the games have been less comfortable because maybe not defending moments right, but I think we've had interruptions there, we've had several injuries, we've had to make changes in game at the time, which doesn't help that side of it, but, you know, today we were strong, we were really strong there at the back and, and I don't even know if Livingston actually had the corner. Um, but in the main, defending from the front, stopping Livingston, getting those accurate long balls into the big tall front players and playing off that, you know, we restricted that, we forced a lot of errors, which also then presented chances for us as well, so all around it was very pleasing. Well done today. Thank you. Yeah, lots of positives for John Kennedy. Chris, and he spoke about the control that they had in the game. How impressive was that? Not to, not to start forcing it after the first half when it was a little bit frustrating, but to be patient. Uh, yes, and, and Celtic were always going to be patient, but but there was the need for greater quality in the final third, and I'm sure that would have been emphasised at half time. And you know, it's all about the all about the first goal in these games when teams are defending deep and you know trying to make it difficult. Celtic got it, and then. As expected, we, you know, we thought they'd kick on and uh, and get more, and, and they did that. They made substitutions. It's you know, it's been a, a pretty good afternoon for uh, for Celtic, but it's against Livingston, so it's three points. It's on to next week. Celtic back on top. Yeah, it has been a pretty good afternoon for Celtic. Not so much for the home side here. So let's get the thoughts of Davy Martindale. He's also with Luke. David, what's your assessment on that today? Um, the game kind of went how I wanted it to go in the first half, in all honesty. Yeah, we never posed too much a threat. Joe never had much to do. But bar the one save for Kyogo, Sham, I don't think they've done too much. Uh, we limited them in the wide areas, and the, the entries they did have were a wee bit uncontrolled. So, game kind of went the way I wanted it to go in the first half, albeit I'd like to be a bit more pressure on the um, top end of the park, a wee bit more entries herself. I thought Tate kept got into a habit of dropping in in front of Sc um, Scales and Carter when the space was actually in behind and it made it a wee bit easier for them to play him. But anyway, I thought going at half time, fairly happy, a couple of wee adjustments and you lose. Again, the story of the season, if I'm, if I'm being really, really honest here, it's just moments within games, individual errors. So 
Lee Stevens got to put his foot through it, put his foot through ball, show up the line, we don't lose that first goal. First goal's actually a ricochet back onto Jamie Brandon. Sham makes a good save. It shouldn't lead to that, but Sham makes a good save. I think it's for Kyogo, and it comes back off Sham, hits Jamie Brandon, goes in the net. So you're 1-0 you're down, I think. See when you lose the first goal against the old firm, I think the game becomes difficult at that point. I think the dynamics of the game, the complexity of the game, totally change. They get a wee bit more confident. We've got to go and then open up get a wee bit higher up the park, take a wee bit more of a chance, and then that probably falls right into Celtic's hands because then the space opens up for the wide players. Second goal uh, takes a nick off the aisle because I think Big Sham's getting it, if I'm honest. It hits Big Aisle's calf and goes in the corner. He's not too far away from it. But again, the build-up to the phase isn't good enough. We can do better ourselves. And the third goal, probably Big Sham disappointed that he's lost it, in all fairness to him. But um, I thought he came up with some big saves in the game. And again, very, very similar to the story of the season. I thought for large moments of the game, we were OK with Inmer shape. Limited Celtic to very little. And you have lost the game 3-0. But all oh, the dynamics of the game, in my opinion, change with our error, at least to their first goal. We've then got to go and try. We've got four offensive players in the park playing in wide areas. We've got a striker playing as a centre mid, as a number 10, trying to chase the game. And the game becomes really open, erratic at that point. It's very transitional and that falls straight into Celtic's hands. Appreciate your time. Cheers. Yeah, frustrating one for Debbie Martindale. Um, from a Celtic point of view, like Chris said, very good build-up to next weekend. Oh, 100%. Um, as, as Chris touched on there with the tatty back, Carter Vickers coming through the 90 minutes. Um, the first half, it's about, you know, you're trying to break Livingston down, you're not able to get there, but the second half, I thought Celtic were comfortable enough and probably should have added more. Um, so I'm sure they'll go into next week with high spirits. Yeah, should be a good one next Sunday. Yeah, I'm quite excited. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. Look, there's not often there's been a title race. Let's get it right in the, the last however many seasons. So, you know, it's it, it's who holds the nerve. You know, it's OK coming to Livingston. Sounds like we're expected to win today. Next week is the acid test. Rangers are bullish. They don't think they're, they're going to lose it from... Uh, from their position, and it's up to Celtic to, to prove everybody wrong. Yeah, well, I'll be seeing both of you there. Robert, you can enjoy it in the comfort of your of your living room, but thank you very much for coming and putting up with these two. This <laughs> have to يومه النهارده وخرج مصاب واضح انه ما كانش في يومه من البدايه يعني النهارده جافارديول لعب افضل مباراه يمكن ليه مع السيتي وحجم ساكا بطريقه واضحه وصريحه. <تصفيق> الناحيه الثانيه برضو صليبه ونص ملعب ارسنال عزل بشكل كبير جدا فودن ودي بروين وبرناردو سيلفا عن هالاند. ومش عايز ابقى بتحامل شويه على هالاند ولكن دايما في مواجهات ارسنال هالاند بيختفي الاختفاء الغريب ده دايما بيختفي وبيبقى قلوب دفاع ارسنال دايما مطلعينه بره اللعب وبيبقى دايما محاور ارسنال عازله الاثنين اللي بيلعبوا تحته في حاله التبادل يبقى ثلاثه سواء فودن برناردو او كيفن دي بروين النهارده عزلوهم بشكل كبير جدا عن هالاند هالاند باستثناء كوره جت في الربع الاخير من الشوط الثاني ما فيش خطوره راحت على المرمى وبعد ما السيتي لعب على التحولات في الفترة الأولى لسبب ما خد من بعد الدقيقة 20 في الشوط الأول إنه يحصر أرسنال في الثلث الأخير بتاعه. ولكن أرسنال نوعاً ما كان بيلعب ميد بلوك فمش مخلي السيتي يهاجم الثلث الأخير أو إن تبقى فيه كرات خطيرة على رايع، هو استحواذ أقرب لاستحواذ كرة اليد إن أنت تحول الملعب بتاعك من اليمين للشمال ترجع تاني بيه من الشمال لليمين. مش عايز أبالغ بس هو حرفياً لحظة كمال كروي بين الفرقتين ان انت
كل فكر هجومي في فريق يقابله بالظبط الميرور بتاعه في الناحيه الدفاع هتطلع جناح هرجع مع الباك بتاعي هتطلع لعيب بيفوت هقدم لك الديفندر بتاعي المهاجم بتاعك هينزل عشان يستلم في انصاف المساحه المدافع بتاعه اللي هو كاظله هيتحرك معاه فبالتالي لا انت عارف تخلق مساحه ولا عارف تمرر تمريره مباشره يمكن لما سرح السيتي في الشوط الثاني نتيجه للضغط المتواصل عرف ارسنال يعمل الكوره اللي بارتي عملها وراحت لتروسارد اللي صدها اورتيجا يمكن دي اخطر فرصه في المباراه يعني لو كان استلمها صح وحط كرة قدامه مش وراه كان عرف يديها بالعرض للاعب اللي جاي في ارسنال كانت ممكن دي تبقى كرة الهدف يعني دي 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 الكرة الوعيدة مارتينيلي ولا تروسارد اللي ضيع مارتينيلي اعتقد دي يمكن الكرة الوحيدة ديكلان رايس وجورجينيو بعد خروج جورجينيو ونزول بارتي بارتي ده لو كامل بدنيا وصحته على طول مش بيتصاب كان ارسنال بقى في حتة تانية حرفيا يعني كان ارسنال حسم مباريات كتيرة قوي 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 كمان اكتر من اللي هو بيحسمه ولكن وجود واحد ادى الحمايه النهارده لديكلان رايس حتى جورجينيو كان بيتاخر شويه على تحت الدايره بحيث يبقى قدام قلوب الدفاع وما يسيبش رايس في حمايه المنطقه لوحده بنزول بارتي الموضوع حرر شويه ديكلان رايس وفي التحولات كمان لان في الفتره دي السيتي كان بيحاول يضغط طب السيتي ضغط امتى في الشوط الثاني لما بدل لعيبة نص الملعب راح مطلع كوفازيتش طلع فودن وحاول ينزل جريليتش وحاول ينزل دوكو لان اصبحت محاولة مهاجمة نص الملعب او اللعب من منطقة النص او محاولة التسديد حتى والوصول الى قوس 18 او زي ما بنسميها في الكرة زون 14 بقت صعبة جدا لان قلوب الدفاع بتاعت ارسنال مع وجود ديكلان رايس وجورجينيو وبعد كده نزول بارتي بقت صعبة جدا بقت صعبة جدا لذلك بيب جوارديولا فكر في تحريك قطع اخرى انه يحاول يوسع الطرف خصوصا مع يعني لويس ريكو اللي كان بيعمله على الناحية اليمين وجفرديول اللي كان بيلعب على الناحية الشمال وانه يحاول يعتمد بعد كده على رودري او تأخر لاعب جنبه زي دي بروين لو دي بروين قدم شوية قدام كان بيحاول جريليتش يفضي مساحة لجفرديول ويخش هو على قوس 18 زي الكرة الأخيرة لو تلاحظ الكرة الأخيرة اللي هو بيب جوارديولا جاله آخر المباراة وكان بيتكلم معاه فيها ما كانش عايزه يعمل التشباية الغريبة اللي عملها لو لعبها على الأرض كان في لاعب دي كانت جنشة أو لمحة خلق مساحة وده الدور اللي كان نازله المفروض جريليتش في المباراة دي وطبعا توميا سو أو بن وايت كانوا قافلين إنه ما يسيبوش وراهم مساحة النهاردة لما أرسنال كان بيحب يأخر اللعب بتاعه علشان هو بيلعب على التحولات كانوا المدافعين بيلتزموا بالخط بتاع قوس ال 18 او منطقه ال 18 فكانوا مش مش سايبين مساحات للسيتي النهارده وكانوا الاربعه بتوع الدفاع بتوعه بيلعبوا على خط واحد الحقيقه اللي مميز ارسنال السنه دي مش بس في المباراه دي اللي مميز ارسنال السنه دي هو وجود دفاع قوي والدفاع هو الذي يجلب لك البطوله. يمكن الجدول بتاع السيتي مزدحم جدول ارسنال فيه شويه مطبات ولكن صراع النهايه صراع اللقب ده هيفضل للنهايه لان مباراه النهارده تحس ان الدقيقة 80 لما رودري ابتدى يشحر لان الكورة كان لازم هو يستلم يعمل عمل الانكر ويوزع على الاطراف مع الضغط بتاع السيتي ومحاولة الارتداد من النص ده كانت اخر الافكار في اخر 10 دقايق اللي تبعها تعب 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 من اللعيبة اللعيبة تعبت نفسيا او بدنيا مرهقة ما فيش لاعب عايز يخسر لان لو ضاع الدوري هيضيع بسبب الغلطة دي بسبب اللاعب ده فكل لاعب في اخر 10 12 دقيقة كان بيستقتل حرفيا على الكوره رودري لما كان بيتعمل عليه فاول ويقع على الارض مش قادر يقوم يعني هو مش قادر يقوم لان الاجهاد كان صعب والمباراه اكتكان ونفسيا صعبه جدا يعني للاسف انا شايف المستقبل قدام ارسنال بديكلان رايس مزهر للحقيقه وهو مزدهر هما بس عايزين لاعب تاني يعني يدي وظائف حمايه اكتر لديكلان رايس لذلك تدعيم بدل جورجينيو بلاعب تاني في, في في الصيف هيبقى خطر لارسنال لما يحبوا يلعبوا على القاب اكثر زي دوري الابطال او الدوري اللي هو السنه دي انا شايف ان في فريق من الاثنين دول رايح لنهائي دوري الابطال ان ما كانش هياخده يعني سواء الارسنال او السيتي لان حقيقه الامر وفعلا ان الفرق بين الفرقتين دول واي فريق ثاني فنيا في اوروبا والثمانيه اللي موجودين في دوري الابطال كبير جدا حتى مع وجود ريال مدريد مع احترامي لي رجال مدريد وتاريخه الكبير في دوري الابطال في عوامل حسم طبعا زي الخبره والكلام ده كله يمكن السيتي اعلى منها شويه في ارسنال في دوري الابطال ولكن تبقى منظومه مايك ارتيتا 
ممتازه رائعه بتادي بشكل كويس جدا النهارده كان عاجبني ارتيتا برضو لما كان جوارديولا بيحاول يغير الافكار بنزول الاطراف محاوله البعد عن لعيبه خط النص هو كان بيرد عليه برضو بتغيير الطرف بتاعه وتاخير اللعب وبعد كده ان اللعيبه بتاعته تقعد على خط واحد طبعا صليبه يعني ممكن تخلص فيه كل الكلام حرفيا واحد من المدافعين اللي بحسه اندر ريتد انه مش واخد الصيت العالمي اللي المفروض ياخده مدافع في السن ده النهارده قاطع ميا ونور عن هولاند وشفنا طبعا المبارزه بينهم طول المباراه والشد والاستفزاز واللي انتهت طبعا بالسلام ما بينهم اخر المباراه ولكن الحقيقه مدافع بدرجه قائد في السن ده يعني ارسنال زي ما بقول لك هو مستقبل للاسف مزدهر ليهم ولكن هو مدافع بقياده بشاره قياده بشاره قياده وده يعني لوجود يورجن كلوب بس في ليفربول ليفربول يقارع هاتان الفرقتان الفرقتين دول الفرق بينهم وبين اللي وراهم يا جماعه كبير قوي والفجوه بتكبر بينهم وبين المنافسين بتاعتهم اللي هتتاثر المبارزه دي مش هتبقى ثلاثيه السنه الجايه بعد خروج يورجن كلوب واعتقد هتبقى معانا موسمين ثلاثه محصوره ما بين ارتيتا وجوارديولا اللي انا ممكن من دلوقتي واحنا النهارده في 31 مارس 2024 اقول لك اني مساله فوز ارسنال باللقب قريبه قوي الموسم ده الموسم الجاي على اقصى تقدير لان المنافسه هتغيب وطبعا واضح بشكل كبير جدا ان مانشستر يونايتد وتشيلسي بعاد جدا عن كره القدم التي يلعبها الفرقتين دول بتكتيك المدربين دول استمراريه بيب جوارديولا او مايك ارتيتا اللي مايك ارتيتا حرفيا لو كان واحد بيتعلم تلميذ نجيب او بينقل محاضرات من جوارديولا وعارف كيف يفكر جوارديولا في ايقاف مفاتيح خطورته ايقاف المساحات اللي بيتغذى عليها جوارديولا او حتى عمل التغييرات المضاده لفكر او تكتيك الاسباني بحيث ما يدلهوش افضليه ولعب في بعض احيان تكتيكيا دور الاندر دوج اللي هو هيلعب بالتغيير بتاعه ورد فعل على جوارديولا ومش ههاجم جوارديولا لانه في فتره ما قال لك انا هامن دفاعيا اطلع من الاتحاد مش خسران وفي نفس الوقت العب على التحولات الكوره اللي اتلعبت بتاعه تروسارد كانت قد تنهي هذه المباراه ولكن طبعا اتصدت والكره جت وراه اللي صدها اوتيجا في النهايه مبروك للفرقتين مبروك لجمهور ليفربول مبروك لجمهور الفرقتين اداء الفرقتين بتوعهم ومبروك لجمهور ليفربول انه فاز اليوم بخمس نقاط مباراه صعبه قدام برايتون عرف يطلع بثلاث نقط واليوم متعثر ارسنال والسيتي اعتقد ليفربول بيتسحب شويه شويه كده لليوروبا ليج ولي الدوري دي كانت كده بس دردشه سريعه في مباراه السيتي وارسنال ويبقى لنا بعد كده ان شاء الله وقت تاني نتكلم بكرة في الخلاصة في القناصة لان الجولة دي فيها شوية كلام كتير عايزين نتكلمه فما فكرتكش من اول الفيديو والفيديو ده بدون مونتاج فلو ما عملتش لايك اعمل لايك ولو مشتركتش في القناة اعمل سبسكرايب وفعل الجرس عشان توصلك اشارات بكل الفيديوهات الجديدة سلام